Welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. We dive into stories of true crime, from unsolved cold cases, to historic kidnapping, to gangsters, and beyond. We are your source for true crime. We thank you for listening. Welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. I am your host, Larry Lease. And today, on an all-new episode of Murder Monday, we're diving into a grandfather that murders his family with no warning. There's no explanation why he became a killer. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pondex, for sponsoring this episode. Check them out today at pondex.com. Use the promo code LARRY21 for 10% off your first purchase. John Walsh appeared to be a loving grandfather at the age of 69. He lived in New South Wales, but was originally from Northern Ireland. His daughter Shelley worked as a police officer. Her marriage to another police officer had broken down, and she now had to look after the, her two children on her own. She'd leave the children, age 7 and 5, overnight with her parents while she worked. In June 2008, Shelley left her children at her parents' home as usual, but something was different this time. She tried calling her mother, Jean, the next morning, but couldn't get through after several attempts. She called again later in the day and spoke to her father. He told her only that her mother was resting. That afternoon, Shelley visited her parents' house, intending to collect her children. She entered her parents' bedroom and saw her mother on the floor with the back against the bed. Her mother was unresponsive. Shelley thought that she looked pale and noted that her hair appeared darker than usual. Shelley went to find her father. John explained that her mother was sick with stomach pains. She was sitting on the floor so she could be comfortable. He told her that her mother wanted to be left alone so she could rest. Shelley found his behavior strange and asked him point blank if her mother had died. John told her to stop being stupid. Her mother was fine. John made some tea and asked Shelley to come and sit with him. As he moved towards the lounge room, he picked up a small axe that was lying nearby. Shelley asked him why he had it. He told him he had just been doing some odd jobs around the house. Shelley was becoming very suspicious of her father's behavior at this point. She noticed that her children's school uniforms were laid out on the lounge. Her father told her the children had gone to school in casual clothes. She immediately went to the children's bedroom and saw her daughter lying in the bottom bunk. She could not see her son. It was then that John Walsh struck. He hit his daughter in the head with the axe repeatedly. Although Shelley was injured with multiple lacerations to her head, she somehow survived and was able to fight back. She managed to grab the axe and unbalance her father. She asked him why he was doing this, and he replied that he was doing it because he loved her. He told her that once he was finished here, he would go to Newcastle to kill her ex-husband. He said that this is the way it has to be. After struggling with her father, Shelley managed to escape to a neighbor's house. By the time police arrived, John Walsh had fled. Shelley was taken to the hospital. She had three lacerations to her head, along with a depressed skull fracture and a tear in the lining of her brain. Part of her skull was replaced with a titanium plate. The following evening, John Walsh was found at a motel and arrested. In his initial interview, he refused to talk about the details of the murders, but a month later, he volunteered for another interview. This time, he explained everything. He told police that he had hit his wife in the head with a hammer shaft three times. The hammer shaft is something he took great pride in owning. He even named it Fred. After hitting his wife, he stabbed her with a knife, and finally hit her in the head with a lump hammer. He told police that his wife had been unwell, and that he killed her out of mercy. There's no evidence that this is true, though. He explained that after killing his wife, he decided to kill his grandchildren. He said it was because no one would be around to look after them filled a bathtub with water and woke his granddaughter. He carried her half asleep to the bath, where he pushed her under the water and held her down until she drowned. Next, he woke his grandson and told him to go to the toilet. As his grandson walked to the bathroom, John struck him in the back of the head with the same hammer shaft he had used to hit his wife. He also hit hit him in the head with a lump hammer. He then put his grandson in the bath and watched to make sure he was dead. He placed the body of his two grandchildren into the bottom bunk in their room. Then he decided that no one would be around to look after the pet dog, so he drowned the dog in the bath as well. Now that's disturbing. He wrapped the dog's body in plastic and placed it under bed where he had put the children. It's unclear what John's motive was for doing all this. Shelley even testified that he had been a loving father and grandfather, and that there was no indication of dementia or mental disorder that could explain his behavior. At some point on the night of the murder, John had typed a brief note apologizing and vaguely explaining what he had done, but it's unclear who the note was intended for. 
John was an, examined by a neuropsychologist, but there was no sign of brain damage. There was nothing that could explain what he had done. John Walsh was convicted and given two life sentences, plus two sentences of 12 and 15 years. That wasn't his last crime, though. In 2017, at the age of 77, nine years after his conviction, John Walsh killed a fellow prisoner. The two shared a cell in the aged unit at Sydney's Long Bay Jail. One night, John took a sandwich press that they kept in their cell and placed it inside a pillowcase. He swung the pillowcase down on his cellmate's head as the man lay on his bed. Prison guards said later that they heard several loud thuds from the cell. Upon investigation, they saw Walsh sitting silently while a cellmate lay on his bed making a loud noise resembling snoring. The guards left briefly before they heard more thud noises and returned. John told the guards, I think I heard him. The cellmate was dead. His skull was fractured and his cheek was concave with part of it appearing to be missing. There was no apparent motive this time either. John said later that the man was an arsehole and looked like he was planning something. He told police that he didn't get angry, he just acted in cold rage. After this crime, John Walsh received his third life sentence. Thank you for listening to this episode of the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. If you all want to support the show, consider buying us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash TCNS. Or you become a Patreon, or a patron, excuse me, at patreon.com slash True Crime Never Sleeps. Thank you for listening, and as always, please like and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a review. You can find us on all major podcast platforms. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. You have been listening to the True Crime Never Sleeps Podcast. Thank you for listening. You can follow us on Facebook at True Crime Never Sleeps Podcast and on Twitter at True Crime NS. And follow us on Instagram at True Crime Never Sleeps. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the show, buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash TCNN or become a patron at patreon.com slash True Crime Never Sleeps.